on that day, rather than meeting here at the church, we're going to meet at the municipal parking lot behind the hardware store, and we're going to walk through our city, and we're going to pray for our city. And we're going to take time and say, God, give us this city. Amen? We're going to pray that God will bless Johnstown and that God will give us a harvest in Johnstown. Amen? I believe that in Jesus' name. I kind of felt that while we were, I had to go to the hardware store 87 times yesterday while we were putting stuff together. And I thought, you know what? We're just going to pray. I was praying for the town originally, and then I was praying uh, that I wouldn't have to come back to the hardware store. And then I was praying when I was at the hardware store that Mike would pick up his phone because I had no idea what I was trying to buy. I got a lot of prayer in yesterday. There was a lot of prayer going on. Amen. Huh? Nine. Nine o'clock. Yeah. Nine o'clock. Um, Thank you to everybody who has put the new floor in in the vestibule and uh, painted the trim and put the bathroom back together. Thank you for putting the bathroom back together. We, I came in on Friday and both toilets were sitting in the vestibule and I went, well, that's going to be a problem. Yeah, um, we're out in the country, but not that far out in the country. That's all I'm saying. And so everybody who put flooring in and put everything back together um, uh, to make God's house look wonderful, thank you, thank you, thank you. I appreciate your hard work. Thank you for your giving. Amen. We appreciate it. You can give online. You can give in the box. There are no snakes in there today that I'm aware of. Um, but feel free to put your offering in the box or to give online. Amen. Aren't you glad God's in the house this morning? Amen. We have prayed and we have fasted and we are here and we believe God's going to do mighty works today. We are so glad to have Brother and Sister Price from West Virginia. Amen. Tornado, West Virginia? Tornado, West Virginia. The man is literally a whirlwind waiting to happen in our own house. Amen. We're so glad they're here. They come highly recommended. Uh, we just met this morning. They went out with Michael and Gabri last night. And we believe God's going to heal people, fill people with the Holy Ghost, and great things are going to happen. Will you believe with me this morning? Amen. Let's welcome the man of God this morning. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Well, praise the Lord, everyone. It's such a privilege and an honor to be with you this morning. And we have anticipated this weekend for several weeks now. And uh, we uh, have prayed as well, have spent time with God, have given ourselves to prayer and fasting. And uh, we just believe God's going to do something here today. Amen. Praise God. There's something to be said about expect, expectation, correct? Right, right. Praise God. If you come expecting, you will receive. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. And the Lord's more willing to pour out than what we can ever anticipate. That's right. That's right. Praise God. He wants to pour out His Spirit. Yeah. He wants to pour out blessings. He wants to pour, pour out strength and increase from His presence. Hallelujah. Praise God. It's, uh, it's, it's such an honor to be here this morning. And I want to take a few moments to get the preliminary out of the way. And first of all, give honor to uh, your district, to your district officials for uh, the vision that they have cast in this great district to uh, uh, have this outpouring weekend. And uh, I know you had a great camp meeting this weekend, or this week, excuse me. And... Uh, uh, we got to view some of that online and great services, great moves of God. And uh, it has brought us to this point today, amen? amen. And uh, we're going to believe God's going to pour out old time Holy Ghost infilling, re infilling, yeah. praise God, of the Spirit of God today. And uh, give honor to your district superintendent, Brother Stark. He was with us in our home church a couple weeks ago. And preached for us and did a marvelous job. And uh, to your pastor, to your pastor's wife and the vision that they have cast here in Johnstown, this is marvelous. I told them before we got out here this morning that, that back home when you've got a church that is uh, as young as this church is, uh, you don't see what has been accomplished here. And God has blessed this place and he has... Put a blessing upon this house. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Won't you give the Lord a praise for that this morning? 
Thank you for the time of fellowship last night. Um, we were honored to spend time with Brother Michael and Sister Gabriella. Is that how you say her name? Okay. And uh, we uh, had a tremendous time of fellowship. Got to come back here and see the church last night. And um, thank you for our room. It was absolutely amazing. So uh, uh, this was a much needed weekend for my wife and I, she don't get to travel with me like she used to. We've got a little four-year-old at home, and uh, that keeps Mama busy sometimes. So but I'm glad she's with me today. If we can start that track, I'm going to sing before we get into the Word of the Lord today. I want you just to worship God with us. I believe the Spirit of the Lord is in this place. If I was back home this morning, our pastor would remind us that where Jesus is, anything can happen. Do you believe that? I said anything can happen. Hallelujah. Can you give me some monitor up here, please? As I kneel in the darkness In the middle of the night I'm praying for assurance Everything's gonna be alright Lord, I see another battle Out in front of me I'm afraid I won't be able And I'll go down in defeat he said, do you remember where I brought you from? Just take a look behind you and see how far you come. And every time you've asked me, didn't I deliver you? So why would you be thinking that I wouldn't see you through? Didn't I walk on the water? Didn't I calm the raging sea? I spoke to the wind, and it hushed, and I gave you peace. Didn't I run to your rescue? Didn't I hear you when you called? I walked right beside you, just so you wouldn't fall. Didn't I leave all of heaven just to die for your sin? I searched until I found you, and I do it all again. Now she's talking to her father in a house that was once a home. She said, Lord, my bills are coming due in six days. It's not that long. She hears a voice so still and low. She said, I've moved like that before. And I'll do this little thing for you. And I'll give you so much more. Didn't I walk on the water? Didn't I calm the raging sea? I spoke to the wind, and it hushed, and I gave you peace. Didn't I run to your rescue? Didn't I hear you when you called? I walked right beside you, just so you wouldn't fall. Didn't I leave all of heaven just to die for your sin? searched until I found you, and I'd do it all again. Oh, didn't I leave all of heaven just to die for your sin? I searched until I found you, and I'd do it all again. Take a moment right now and just love the Lord together across this house. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. Aren't you thankful for the faithfulness of our God? Hallelujah. He said, I'll never leave you, never forsake you. Praise God. Hallelujah. He's a God that is here. Praise God. Hallelujah. He's a God that is present. Amen. Glory to God. I feel his sweet presence here today. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. If you're physically able this morning, I want to direct your attention to the word of the Lord and would invite you. I'm not sure what the custom here is, but as I open up the word of God, I think it's always appropriate that we stand for the reading of the word of the Lord. And uh, we can give honor to many things today. People of prestige that would come in our presence, we would stand in honor of them. But one of the greatest, high, high, greatest and highest honors I believe that we can give is to recognize the power of the Word of God. You know, the psalmist declared that God has exalted His Word even above His name. And the Bible says that the name of Jesus, that every name shall bow and every tongue shall confess. But what we'll be judged by is the Word of God. Praise God. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but His Word shall never pass away. Amen. Psalms, the 46th chapter of the book of Psalms. We want to direct your attention there this morning. I do appreciate your media and sound team. Thank them for their efforts. They were patient with me yesterday as I was trying to get things emailed over last night, and I appreciate the hard work uh, of them putting things together. You know, sometimes we think church just falls in place. There's a lot of work that goes on behind the scenes. Amen? Praise God. Psalms chapter number 46, directing our attention to verse 1, the psalmist declares that God is our refuge and strength. How many knows that's true this morning? He tells us a very present help in time of trouble. Therefore, will not we fear, though the earth be removed and though the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea, though the waters therefore roar and be troubled, Though the mountains shake with the swelling thereof. And then we see this word, Salah. Salah tells us to pause, to reflect, to take in everything that we have read up into this moment. But in verse number 4, we pick up the psalmist telling us that there is a river. I'm here to tell us this morning that there is a river. The streams, the Bible says, uh, therefore shall make glad the city of God, the holy place of the tabernacles of the Most High. God is in the midst of her. Don't you know this morning that God is in the midst of His people? He said that where two or three uh, are together in my name, that there am I. In the midst of them. Praise God today. Uh, She shall not be moved. God will help her. And that right early. The heathen raised and the kingdoms were moved. He uttered his voice uh, and the earth melted. Uh, The Lord of hosts is with us. Oh, I can't stress that enough this morning uh, that you recognize uh, that the presence of the Lord uh, is in this place. uh, That the almighty God uh, of heaven that fills this very universe uh, is in our midst this morning. uh, That God is with us. uh, The God of Jacob is our refuge. He said, come behold the works of the Lord. What desolations he hath made in the earth. He maketh wars to cease unto the end of the earth. He breaketh the bow and cutteth the spear in sunder. He burneth the chariot in fire. But in verse number 10, a scripture that all of us has probably heard many times. The psalmist declares, be still and know. 
that I am God. I will be exalted among the heathen. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. Salah. I want to direct our attention back up this morning where I read in our hearing. In verse number 4, the psalmist declares that there is a river. He said, the streams whereof shall make glad the city of God, the holy place of the tabernacle, the tabernacles of the Most High. I want to preach to this congregation this morning about that river. Let me talk to you this morning from this subject. There is a river. There is a river. Father, we thank you, God, for your presence, God, that we feel in this place. We thank you for your word, and we thank you, God, for the power that is in your word. And Lord, everything that your word has been sent forth to do, it will accomplish, because your word shall not return into your void. And God, we thank you, Lord, for this great congregation of people. We thank you, Lord, that you are going to move upon hearts and you are going to touch lives. And God, that we are going to leave this place different than when we came. Lord, we thank you, God, today for the great and mighty things that you have done and that which you will do. God, and we give you praise, God, for all these things. For we ask it in Jesus' name. Would you take this a moment right now and would you put your hands together and can we offer up a praise across this house to the Lord? I've come today to preach about a place of healing, a place of blessing, a place of abundance and overflow. I've come today to preach to this church about a river, not just any river, but a river that releases the miraculous, a river that flows with salvation and strength, a river that contains everything that we'll ever need. Oh, can I talk to you this morning about a river, a river of living water, a river that never runs dry, a river that calls deep unto deep, a river that will quench the thirst of the thirsty, a river with water so sweet that you'll never thirst again. Oh, I'm here today to tell us that it's here in our text today that the psalmist tells us that there is a river whose stream shall make glad the city of God, the holy place of the tabernacle of the Most High, that God is in the midst of her and she shall not be moved. God shall help her just at the break of dawn. I've come today to challenge our this church uh, that it's time today uh, that we step into uh, that river. Uh, I said it's time today uh, that we wade out uh, into that river. Uh, it's time today uh, that we taste uh, of that river. Uh, it's time today uh, that we experience uh, this river, uh, the river uh, of uh, the everlasting uh, God. The scripture speaks in several places of this river. We find in the book of Isaiah, Isaiah chapter 43 and verse number 2. 
Isaiah the prophet says that when uh, you pass through uh, the waters, uh, he said, I will be with you. Uh, praise God. And through uh, the rivers, uh, they shall not overwhelm you. Uh, when you walk through the fire, uh, you shall not be burned and the flames shall not uh, consume you. Uh, the prophet Zechariah in Zechariah chapter number 14 uh, and verse number 8 tells us, uh, and it shall be in that day uh, that living waters, uh, the Bible says, shall go out from Jerusalem, uh, half of them toward the former sea, uh, and half of them toward the hinder sea. Uh, in the summer uh, and in the winter, uh, the Bible says, uh, shall it be. Now, Pastor, I believe that what Isaiah was seeing was this modern day outpouring of the Holy Ghost that the prophets of old foretold about. He saw a continuation, a continual outpouring that that outpouring wouldn't take part uh, in just one season, uh, but they would be a continual uh, outpouring of the Spirit uh, of Almighty God. Uh, aren't you thankful today uh, that God has given you uh, uh, the ability to live in that time uh, that the Scripture said uh, that in the last days uh, that God would pour out of His Spirit uh, upon all flesh. Uh, that in the last days Hosea said that the glory of the latter house would be greater than the former. I'm telling you that this is exciting times. These are times that we ought to live with great expectation and great excitement down in our soul because God has a harvest for this end time, this end time church, the harvest that is greater than than any time in any dispensation, dispensation up until this time in our history. Oh, hallelujah, I'm here today to tell you uh, that God wants to open up the river uh, here at Crossroads Church. Uh, God wants His people uh, to experience uh, that which He has for them. If you believe that, give Him a praise in this house this morning. In John's Gospel, chapter 7. Jesus said that whosoever believes in me as the scripture has said. You know it's very important that when we read that portion of this verse uh, that we take in and digest what Jesus has just said. Uh, there's a lot of people that believe in God and that's great, that's well. Praise God, but just believing is not enough, Pastor. Uh, it takes more than simple belief. Uh, James would tell us that even the devil uh, believes that there's one God. Uh, the Bible says if you believe that there's one God, you do with well because the devil believes uh, that. Uh, but I'm telling you uh, that Jesus said if you believe uh, in me as the scripture has said, uh, he said that out of your belly uh, or out of your uttermost being uh, or out of your heart uh, will flow rivers uh, of living water. I'm here today to tell you that God wants to pour out the Holy Ghost. I said God desires that we might be filled. God desires that we have more of Him and less of you and I. I'm here today as John said, I must be decrease uh, that he might increase. Uh, I don't know how you feel this morning, uh, but I need a taste uh, of that river. Uh, I need a drink uh, from that water. Uh, I need uh, a visit to that fountain. Uh, I need to experience uh, this river uh, of uh, the everlasting God. Uh, hallelujah. There are many types and many shadows uh, that we could read 
read about and talk about this morning throughout the Word of God. But my attention is directed to the book of Ezekiel, chapter 47. And we're going to read a few verses of Scripture here. He said that afterwards, in verse 1, uh, he said, Afterward, he brought me again unto the door of the house. And behold, the Bible says waters. Somebody shout waters. The Bible says issued out from under the threshold of the house eastward. And the forefront of the house stood toward the east. And the Bible says, and the waters, somebody shout waters, came down from under the right side of the house at the south side of the altar. Then brought he out me, then brought he me out of the way of the gate northward and led me about the way without even into the utter gate by the way that looketh eastward and behold there ran you guessed it right the Bible says waters on the right side and when the man that had the line in his hand went forth eastward he measured out another cubic a thousand cubics and he brought me through the waters and the water Waters were to the ankles, and again he measured a thousand and brought me through the waters, and the waters were to the knees, and he measured a thousand and he brought me through the waters, and the waters were to the loins. But listen in verse number five, he says that afterwards, afterwards he measured a thousand again, and it was not just waters this time, but but it was a river. Somebody shout a river. A river that I could not pass, the writer said. For waters were raised. Waters to swim in. A river that could not be passed. We understand that as we study through the scriptures. That this was one of the many visions that was showed to the prophet Ezekiel concerning Israel's spiritual state. If you would permit me to do so, I'd like to take you back about ten chapters to chapter number 37. Hopefully we'll be able to tie all this in together. But we understand that it is here that the Lord speaks to his prophet showing him a vision of dry bones, showing him a valley of dry bones. And he asked Ezekiel the question. He said, Ezekiel, as you look over this valley of dry bones, the Lord asked him, he said, can these dry bones live? Ezekiel answers the question. He said, Lord, you're the only one that has that answer. I'm not sure how the rest of you are here today, but just like Ezekiel, sometimes we can look out and when we see all that we can see with the natural eye is desolation. And when we look out in our natural eye and all we see around us is emptiness, it's hard to imagine anything else. But God was trying to put something with inside of Ezekiel. He said, Ezekiel, what I want you to do is I want you to begin to prophesy. And as he began to prophesy, he began to prophesy to the wind. And when the wind began to get stirred up, hear me preach this morning. The Bible says that something began to move upon that valley of dry bones. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. I'm telling you there's something about when a man of God stands behind this sacred desk and when a man of God begins to declare the things of God according to his word. There's power in that. I said there's power in that. There's demonstration in that. Praise God. And as Ezekiel began to speak the things of God, uh, life 
uh, began uh, to move upon those dry bones. Uh, and those of you that are familiar with the, tr the text, uh, you know that as Ezekiel began to pray, uh, uh, prophesy uh, that that army uh, began to come together. Uh, it was no longer a boneyard, uh, but before him, uh, there was uh, a mass army uh, of skeletal remains that had took formation and was standing before the prophet. Uh, and the Lord began to do a miracle. Uh, and uh, as Ezekiel uh, uh, kept praying and prophesying the things of God, uh, uh, flesh and sin you uh, came upon that uh, uh, that once was uh, uh, this nothing but a pile of bones. Uh, God began to move upon those bones, uh, and flesh and sinew came upon them. Uh, and before it, uh, uh, the breath of life uh, uh, that God Himself can only give uh, came uh, uh, into those bodies again. Uh, what are you trying to say this morning, preacher? Uh, I'm telling you. Uh, that God was trying to show Ezekiel something uh, uh, that when he looked across uh, uh, this place uh, that some would consider bareness uh, and emptiness God said I've got uh, a revival there I've got uh, praise God uh, the ability to do a work uh, you may see nothing but dry dead bones uh, but I see a great army before me uh, I see a mighty army before me and I've come here this morning to Johnstown, Ohio to tell God's people that I see a great and mighty revival that is right before you. I feel in the Holy Ghost this morning that the greatest of miracles that you are just at the threshold of seeing what God has planned for this end time and for this time uh, uh, that he has risen up this great church uh, here in this city. Uh, I'm telling you God uh, is about to do something. Uh, God is about ready to open up the rivers. Uh, God is about ready to open up the waters uh, and he's about ready to pray, pray uh, uh, pour something fresh uh, upon the people of this area like this area has never seen before. Uh, if you'll believe that this morning uh, in faith, put your hands together and lift your voice uh, and give the Lord a praise. Some time ago, I was up in the northern part of our state in a hotel room praying, seeking God. And the spirit of prophecy moved upon me in a heavy way, Pastor. God began to show me some things about what He wanted to do in the end time. And the things that He spoke to me, I have felt that they are declarative statements that I am to declare to His people in the end times. And I'm to tell God's people that God declared to me that day the opening up of waters. He told me uh, uh, to tell his people, uh, to tell the ministry and the saints of life that there's something uh, that is settling in your area that is about to erupt forth uh, like a tsunami. Uh, and I'm not talking about devastation, uh, but I'm here today to proclaim to you. Uh, I'm here to release upon God's people today uh, that God spoke to me about a release and an overflow, uh, a supernatural flow uh, of the river of God. Uh, I'm talking about a release. I feel the Holy Ghost in this house right now. Uh, a release of apostolic ministry and apostolic authority. I'm talking about the opening up of an end time outpouring of God's Spirit. Oh, come on this morning, saints. I want to know if anybody in here can envision what you, what your pastor has envisioned. 
I see a city this morning, a city that has turned itself to God. I see a church this morning that is full to capacity. I see these these altars filled. I see the waters of that baptistry moving. I see people being filled with the Holy Ghost. I see people praising. I see people dancing in the Spirit. I see great moves of God taking place at Crossroads Church this morning. Can you envision that this morning? God's got a river He wants to open up. Hallelujah. The prophet Ezekiel back here in chapter 47. He has this vision about the waters that are coming out from the house of God. They were just little streams when they started. But as they got further away from the house of the Lord, these waters that were southward and northward and eastward, they spread out. I was thinking last night as I was studying in the hotel that some of the most powerful rivers that we have, the reason that they're powerful is because of their tributaries. The mighty Mississippi wouldn't be the mighty Mississippi if it didn't have the tributaries that it had. Every soul in this house this morning, you are a vital part to this revival that God is bringing to Johnstown, Ohio. And I hear, I'm here today to tell you that as those waters were just a small stream that were coming out of the tabernacle of God or the house of God, that as they flowed out, uh, that Ezekiel was uh, able to experience uh, uh, that water. And the Bible tells us that as he uh, took his time and he began to stand out and step in uh, to the waters... uh, The Bible says, Brother Michael, uh, that those waters uh, were merely ankle deep. Uh, And sometimes I found out as though that God's people, uh, uh, we find comfort uh, in that ankle deep water. Uh, I remember my parents, uh, my parents, they always uh, stressed to us the importance of learning how to swim uh, because neither one of them had the privilege to do so. Uh, And uh, they were always scared of us uh, uh, getting around water uh, and oftentimes when we would uh, uh, would go to places where there was water and we would want to get involved in those activities uh, uh, mom and dad would have to stand on the sidelines and you would see them uh, with their ankles maybe uh, uh, in the water uh, and maybe they would get a little brave like Ezekiel here did uh, a little further on he found himself uh, he said well the ankle was Water's not too bad. Maybe I'll go up to the knee. And he went up to the knee, Pastor. And the Bible says that at the knee, things weren't too bad. And things were still comfortable. But then he felt that urge and that tug to get on out into the waters. And as he found himself wading out a little bit deeper, he found himself in waters to the waist deep. Now, waters to the waist deep. And then... Uh, He was able to get into waters uh, uh, that were waters that were chest high. But then all of a sudden, uh, it it happens that way. I don't know if uh, you've been out in open waters like I have, uh, but you can be in water that looks like it's just uh, uh, you're able to put your your feet flat on the ground. But before you know it, you're in waters that are completely over your head. And that's where Ezekiel was. He explained it this way. He said it was only waters that could be swam in. It was no longer waters that could be passed. But he found himself in a river. And that's where God's people, I believe, that God wants us to be today. He wants us not to be satisfied waiting out in the mere ankle deep water. 
He wants us in a place that we're not satisfied in the comforts of the knee deep water. He wants us in the place that we're not satisfied uh, uh, to the waist deep water uh, and to the places where we're, we're still in a, a place of comfort. Uh, you know, it's, it's like that for humans. Uh, it's like that everywhere. Uh, uh, we like our comfort. We like to not be pushed out of our comfort zones. We not like our own space to be protected. Uh, but God is sending a challenging word to this church this morning. Uh, you are in a place right now, and I feel Feel this in the Holy Ghost, Pastor, uh, that God is trying to take some of you uh, into deeper places uh, than you've ever walked in before. Uh, he's trying to get you to experience things uh, in Him that you've never experienced before. Uh, he's trying to take you in places, uh, places that you can swim in, uh, places that call it deep under deep, uh, places uh, uh, that, that, that can only be experienced uh, when you just launch out uh, and dive out into that river that river the river of God lift your hands up and just worship the Lord for a moment I feel the Holy Ghost in this place The prophet of God was telling God's people, we don't need to be afraid of the river. You know, that's what happens a lot of times in the denominal world. And I'm not here trying to put down on anyone. As Brother Jeff Arnold said, I commend anyone. Anyone that bows their knee to God and prays to God, they're going to receive something. I don't care who you are. I'm not trying to discredit anyone's experience in this place. Because I believe that if you have faith in God, that God can do something for you. But I'm here today to tell you, uh, I'm here to speak to the apostolic church today uh, that it's time for us to go into the deeper things of God. Uh, that there is a river. Uh, there is a vast river, an abundant supply. Uh, but the scripture declares that the prophet continued uh, in that river uh, until he found himself totally immersed. Uh, oh, what could God do for us today, crossroads? Uh, if we would just get immersed uh, in his presence. Uh, if we would just get uh, in a place where it didn't matter anymore. Uh, that we weren't worried about or concerned about uh, who was around us. Uh, but the, our center attention our center focus uh, was upon God uh, and pleasing Him uh, and worshiping Him uh, and serving Him. Uh, what could God do uh, in our midst? Uh, we would see healings. We would see miracles. Uh, we would see greater moves of God. Uh, we would see outpourings of the Holy Ghost. Uh, I'm here today to tell God's people, don't be afraid uh, to get in the river. Uh, don't be afraid uh, to launch out into that river. Uh, I'm here today to tell you uh, that if you have an ear, you need to hear uh, that it's time that you wait out. Uh, it's time that you step out. Uh, I'm here today to tell us uh, that we got to. Uh, we cannot. Uh, we cannot let this moment pass us by. But it's time to get down in that water. Uh, it's time to wait out in the river. Uh, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Give him a praise in this house they said the bible tells us that there was a man that had a condition for 38 years and he would sit by this place the bible calls it the pool that was known as bethesda and it was noted that during times and certain seasons that god would send the angel of the Lord. The angel of the Lord would come and he would stir the water. 
And those that were halt and lame had all matter of conditions and problems that if they could get in that water at that moment, they were healed. Jesus came and he shows up there at Bethesda and this man who had laid by this pool for 38 years. That's a long time. 38 years, he had been waiting for his opportunity to get into that water. Jesus came. And as Jesus began to minister to him, he basically asked him, he said, why haven't you been in the water? He said, why have no man to help me? Jesus was telling him something that day. He said, you don't need the help of man. That man picked up his bed, the Bible says, because he was in the presence of the one that was able to give living water. My mind goes back to John chapter 4. It tells us the story that Jesus met a woman that she drew water, the Bible says, from a well that was referred to as Jacob's well. She went there during the time of day that no one else would go because of her reputation. She couldn't afford to be seen. But Jesus showed up at the time that that woman was there to draw water. And the way that Jesus operated, he sat down there at the well that day and began to minister and to help this woman. But he asked her first. He said, give me something to drink. Of course, with all the things that she had going on inside, she said, why would you, a Jew, ask from me, a Samaritan, from a, for a drink? You have no dealings with us. You consider us dogs. But Jesus told her, he said, lady, if you knew what I was really talking about, you wouldn't question my motives. You wouldn't question why I've asked you to give me the drink. Because I want to give you the water today. Not the water that you drawn out all these years from Jacob's well. Because Jacob's well is a temporary fix. Jacob's well will quench a thirst momentarily. This a temporal quenching of the thirst. But he said, what I want to share with you today is a water that is living water that will spring up into everlasting life. He wasn't concerned about all her her baggage and all the, uh, the things that were wrong in her life, but Jesus took a moment to, to minister to a woman that was considered by society as an outcast. And Jesus told us uh, through this story uh, that He came uh, to give life and life more abundantly. He came to give hope where there was no hope. He came to pour out water, water that would quench the, the sin sick soul, water that would turn your life around, water. Oh God, I feel your presence here. Hallelujah today. Water that you have tasted just one drop of the water that God wants to give from you. It will give you a whole entire lease, not on life, but upon eternal life. Hallelujah. I'm talking about a living water. I'm talking about a river today. Praise God that if you could taste of it today, you would say, why did I wait so long? I can hear what the sun 
psalmist said, he said, oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Now, I want you to know today that this river and this water that I'm preaching about today is full of the goodness and of the mercy and of the blessings of our God. And he wants to pour it out. I said he wants to pour it out. He wants to pour it out. He wants to pour it out on every soul and every individual in this house. There's an invitation today. Sister Ryan, if you want to get ready to come. Brother Man, if you want to get ready to come. One of the grandest invitations that I see Jesus ever gave is in Matthew 11. When he said, all ye that are weary and are heavy laden. He said, come unto me. I'll give you rest. You know, there's a lot of folks today that they're just looking for some type of satisfaction. That's why they turn to the things of the world. I drove past an establishment back home just a few weeks ago, and I meant to take a picture. I'm going to. But they had hanging up on the front on their advertisement. So we offer temporary solutions. And I said, boy, how true that is. Because if you know, like I know, this world really doesn't have anything that will ever truly satisfy you. You can try to fill it with anything that you think that will fill that void, but there's only one thing that's going to fill that place. And that void in your life. And that's the Holy Ghost. That's Christ in you. The hope of glory. That's the assurance today. That you can have. Eternal life. Praise God forever. The psalmist in Psalms chapter 63. I'm going to read a few more verses here. And we're going to come to a close today. He says, O God, thou art my God. He said, Early will I seek thee. My soul thirsteth for thee. Are you thirsty today? Are you thirsty today? He said, My flesh longeth for thee in a dry and thirsty land. He said, a land where no water is. You know, I found that there's other places in the Word of God that David, in his passion and in his desperation, he described the relationship that he had with God. Possibly that could have been why he was a man that God said was a man that was after his own heart. Because long before David ever set upon the throne as the king of Israel, David forged a relationship on the backside, on the hills. Of his father's homestead. That's where he found God. And what David found out there while he was all alone in those places of solitude, those were the things that when David found trouble in his life, that's where he went to. We've got to get desperate today to be filled. With the Spirit. We've got to be desperate today. That God would empty us of ourself. And that He would fill us up. With His presence and His power in His anointing. 
God desires to do that here today. If you're here under the sound of my voice and you're ready to experience this river that I've preached to you about today, I'm going to invite you to first of all stand to your feet. Now, I've communicated with your pastor a little bit this week via text, but he's told me nothing about any individual in this house today. So what I know is only what God is showing me at this moment. And that's the way I like to operate. It doesn't matter If you're actively living in a life of sin right now, the Lord is able to forgive. And I'm going to make an appeal that we all step out of our seats and we make our our way around this altar this morning. We're going to spend some time in the presence of the Lord today. God wants to do something here in this house. Come on, just lift your hands. Just begin to talk to the Lord today. If you've got things in your life you're dealing with right now, right now is a good time to call it out to the Lord and ask Him to forgive you. Faith in God is the first step, but faith in God is going to bring forth repentance. Lord, you see our hearts, God, today. You see our needs today. You know where we're standing at in this present time. Lord, we need you. We need your presence. We need the power of your Spirit living inside of us. To help us to live soberly and godly in this present world. Come on, saints, lift your voices to the Lord. Let's talk to God today in this house. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Come on, lift your voices to the Lord. Take the music down just to an octave, octave for me, just real softly, if you will. I want to know in this place this morning that if there's some individuals in this house today that you say, for the price, I want to experience that river of God that you talked about. That river of the Spirit came on the day of Pentecost. They had been in the upper room Scripture says seven to ten days they had been up there praying. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were in one mind, one accord, and in one place. God does His best work in suddenly kind of moments. When we least expect it. Now, I believe there was expectation there, don't get me wrong, because they wouldn't have stuck around for that duration, praying, seeking God, if they didn't believe something was coming. But when it showed up, I believe it came. And that's the way it's going to come in this house today. It's going to come. It's going to come that quick. If you've never received the baptism of the Holy Ghost with evidence of speaking with other tongues as the Spirit of God has given given you the ability. I want you to slip your hand up. Come on, don't be embarrassed. It's nothing to be embarrassed about. If you've never received the Holy Ghost with the evidence of speaking in tongues, I see a couple hands there. I'm going to give some simple instructions here, and we're going to believe God to fill these ones with the Holy Ghost today. God's going to do it, amen? Amen. Brother Price is not going to do it, but God's going to do it. Amen? 
God's going to fill them with the Holy Ghost. For they that hunger and thirst after righteousness shall be filled. They shall be filled. They shall be filled. Praise God. It is the promise of God. Peter said, For this promise is unto you and to your children and to all them that are far off, even as many as the Lord God shall call. We've repented. That is the first thing that you've got to get out of the way. You've got to have a, a clear heart and a clear conscience with God. You can't get nowhere with God if you've got baggage. You've got you to empty all that out. But we're going we're gonna to pray one more time before. And once we repent of our sins, I want you to lift your hands towards God. And I want you to close your eyes. And I want you, to the best of your ability, to get the Lord on your mind. Ever how you can picture or envision Him to be this morning. Our beloved bishop used to tell us, Brother Ryan, he said, you know, some can see Jesus as that gentle shepherd. But yet some have to see God as the Almighty seated upon His throne. Ever how you can see Him, you view Him and you see Him this morning, but just keep your mind upon God. That's the most important thing. And the third thing I'm going to ask you to do this morning is I'm going to ask you to use your voice. Because God requires us to use our voice to be filled. You cannot be filled if you won't open your mouth. Because you got to open your mouth and you got to communicate to God. The best way to do that is to give Him the highest praise that there is. And the highest praise that you can give God is to give Him a hallelujah. That's 10,000 praises in the ears of God when you say one hallelujah. So I'm going to speak the word of faith here in a moment, but we're going to, we're going to pray one more time before I do that. And I want us, if we've got anything, and I want you to be sincere about this, and it's only between you and God, if you've got anything in your heart, if it's conscious or maybe it's something that you're not even aware of, but you really, truly desire to go forward in your walk with God today, you really desire to experience this river of God I've preached to you about today, I want you to pray right now. Father, we ask you one more time, Lord, to sweep by this place. God, let repentance sincere, authentic repentance sweep across this house right now. We lay our lives down at this time of prayer, at this altar. We commit to You to live for You for the rest of our days, O oh God. God, we want to live for You. We desire to be ready for Your coming, God. We desire to be filled with the Spirit. Ha! Of the Lord God. We thank you. We give you praise. Now I've given you some instructions. Now I want you to follow those instructions. I think everyone can follow them. They're very easy. Eyes closed. Hands lifted. And when I get done speaking. the, the, the And I get done releasing the gift of faith in this house right now. The Holy Ghost is going to come upon some of you. You're going to feel that heaviness. It may, it may start in your mind. You may begin, once you begin to praise God and say hallelujah, you may begin to hear words that are not of your understanding come in your mind that you're like, that sounds strange and foreign to me. But by faith, if you allow those words from here to here, you're going to feel that river start opening up down inside of your soul. Just by faith, start speaking those words out. It may sound like baby gibberish to you. But to God, it's a language. To God, it's a language. When I speak the word of faith, when I shout hallelujah, I want you to begin to pray and shout hallelujah and use your best outside voice until you hear yourself begin to speak with that other tongue. Are you ready? Are you ready? Lift your hands right now. Lift your hands. Heads lifted towards heaven. Father, by the authority of your word, 
and in the power that's in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I release the gift of the Holy Ghost upon your people. I release, release fresh infillings, refillings. God, today, whatever your need is, I release it in the Holy Ghost today. Hallelujah. Come on, worship the Lord. Worship the Lord in this place.